Hey, Buzzheads, Curtis Tucker here, that Buzz guy. Welcome back to the podcast and to the YouTube channel. If you guys are listening on the podcast, don't forget you can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you can also listen to the podcast basically on all of your favorite podcasting apps if you don't have a computer or a phone in front of you and you're not able to watch, you can at least listen to the episodes. Uh, Hope everybody is having a great 2021. Just wanted to hop back on here and uh, do another quick episode. I think like I told you on the last episode, this this year is going to be a little different, 2021, where I'm not going to be as um, steady. Uh, Hopefully you'll end up, uh, we'll end up doing a lot more episodes and so Today's episode, I'm just throwing in there, so I'm not going to be doing like a regular, you know, like every Wednesday at 2, every Wednesday at 2 type of deal. It's going to be more like when I get ideas or things are happening, it's going to be more of journaling. So I thought I would throw this one in here. This is actually going to be a, um, an episode that I wrote the uh, information for this episode on January 1st, 2021, and I posted it at Curtis tucker.com on the blog so you, if you guys just want to read over my list you can go there so today's episode is 20 things that i learned in 2020 and i think we all learned a whole lot of stuff but this is just uh, the these were just some of my thoughts my takes uh, when it was the when it was new year's the new year and so i was thinking back on 2020 which i thought was going to be a great year because i like the number 2 and the number 20 and i was hopeful that it was going to be a a really good year um, for me personally. It wasn't a super bad year. It was just uh, you know for overall, it was kind of a wonky year. You know with the uh, COVID and uh, all that other stuff. So I'm going to be playing with some stuff uh, as well. I am right now. I'm playing with my Apple Watch, and if you guys can see, I'm right there on the screen. So the Apple Watch is pretty cool because I can turn the camera on and off with my uh, Apple phone and also what I found out when I was kind of messing with it is if you turn the little dial it zooms in or out I'm not going to touch it right now but uh, so you'll notice that if you guys are watching on the YouTube channel uh, you notice I got a fun uh, Snoopy background I'm going to try out some different backgrounds and sound wise on this one uh, I am again not using my Yeti microphone directly into the computer. Right now I'm using a lavalier mic into my phone. I'm going to see how that sounds and uh, you guys let me know what the sound quality on this episode is. Hopefully uh, it's okay. uh, Doing some testing it sounded actually kind of loud so I may turn that down in editing. But anyway so today's episode we're going to just hop right into it. 20 things that I learned in 2020. Um, This really doesn't have a whole lot to do with uh, media or marketing or anything, just basically life in general. And that's going to be, I'm going to mix episodes, learning episodes, where hopefully I can teach you guys some stuff like the how to get your drones license and how to maybe do a clothing brand and uh, some different things like that. But then there's going to be episodes thrown in there just just about life and what's going on and and hopefully some other maybe motivational or positive things. I don't know that this is even that. This is just my take on what I learned in 2020. So hope you guys enjoy. Number one, uh, what I learned, especially towards the end of the year, was that no matter who you are or what you do, somebody out there is not going to like you no matter what. And so I do a lot of posting, uh, especially for Enid Buzz. And so I want you guys to be aware that uh, starting a YouTube channel or a blog or a podcast, um, hopefully people will get on and review you and leave you um, tips and uh, what they feel about your, your podcast or your blog. Uh, on social media, but what you're gonna, what I want you to be aware of is there are some unhappy trolls that no matter what, they are never gonna be happy, and all they do is complain. And so their whole purpose in life, rather than like, hopefully us, you know, we like to create things, be positive, put things out into the world. Uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But at least we're trying, we're, we're putting things out there. Whereas there is a, a small group of people out there 
that actually their whole purpose in life is to get online and bash people no matter what. Um, some people just don't have a filter and sometimes they make comments not even really realizing how stupid they are, but um, you're gonna you're gonna notice that no matter what you do, what good things that you do, some posts or some episodes that you do are gonna be so innocent and positive, but then there's there are gonna be people that are gonna get on and they're gonna twist that into something negative. And so what I want you guys to realize is it's going to, it's going to happen. It happens all the time. Uh, and just ignore it because uh, they're sad people. They are um, negative people. And if you can, try to block them, try to get rid of them, or just get used to them. But I uh, just want you guys to be aware that uh, no matter what you do, no matter how good you are, somebody out there is not gonna like you and they're gonna say something, so uh, ignore them. Number two. Many people value freedom over health, and others prefer restriction over risk. And basically what I mean by that is basically the whole pandemic thing. Um, I know in the beginning it was really scary. The numbers were really bad. We didn't know what was going to happen. There was no science. There was no seeing what was going to happen. Uh, just the numbers were awful. And so we all, we all locked down. And looking back on it now, in my opinion, it was 100% wrong, the uh, lockdown. And uh, lockdown for me didn't last very long. I uh, started venturing out pretty quick uh, after I realized it wasn't as bad as what they originally said. But um, you got to think about how, how this country was built, and it was built on freedom. And we go to wars for freedom, and, and we fought for freedom. And so what we did there for a little while was we gave up our freedom because of this disease. Now, had it been something like the Black Plague or something, I could maybe understand it, but it wasn't. It hasn't turned out to be that. Even though it is bad, there, there is a pandemic. People are dying. It is bad. We do need to social distance and do those things, but we don't need to stay afraid and locked up in our houses and give up all of our freedoms, and that's what we did. Uh, a lot of us gave up our freedoms, and uh, so um, a lot of us, including me, we are no longer willing to give up our freedoms um, over health, and so I'm willing to risk my health just as I am with the flu, with uh, flying in an airplane, with crossing a street, with uh, just anything else. Uh, I'm willing to risk my health with the COVID-19 because I value my freedom to be able to go out and do what I want. And so, um, but what we did find out was uh, uh, there are some people that aren't willing to give up their free, I mean, that are willing to give up their freedom and they're, they're hiding in their homes and they have been since March. And, uh, but, you know, that's fine, especially if they have health concerns and things like that. So anyway, we learned that in 2020. Uh, number three, people are gullible and will believe almost anything without much evidence. And, you know, we've known that for several years now on social media. Uh, social media is manipulated by uh, the right, the left, the radicals, Russia, China. If you don't believe it, um, I, I don't know what to tell you, but it is true. They are manipulating. If you were to fact check probably 70 to 80 percent of everything on social media, especially on Facebook, you'll find out that uh, it is either 100 percent incorrect or you know 50 percent incorrect, and you're just not getting the other story. And so, but what we found was that some of these different organizations and parties are trying to manipulate the way that people think, feel, and do things, especially voting, by uh, putting out this fake information. And what is really sad is there are so many millions of people that believe everything that they read online or everything that they see on television, and they don't, they don't think to look for different sources to verify, um, to look things up, to make sure. And even looking things up sometimes, um, you know, sometimes fake news uh, backs up fake news. And so sometimes it, it takes three sources or digging a little deeper to find out whether these things are true. So uh, what we did find out, though, in 2020 is uh, millions of people are gullible and will believe just about anything. I suggest you don't believe anything. No matter what you see on social media, do not believe it. Go fact check it, research, read articles, and then come to your own conclusions. Number four, if you don't stay active when you're young, you'll regret it when you're old. 
This came about in 2020 because uh, my mom uh, turned 80, my father-in-law turned 81, and basically they both are to the point where they can barely walk. They have to use walkers and canes. They never, neither one ever exercised, um, got a little bit overweight, smoked, um, one drink soda pop, one drink uh, alcohol, uh, just did not take care of themselves. And so what we're dealing with is older parents that can't get around. If either one of them were to fall in their living room or anywhere in their house, uh, they cannot get up on their own. So they have to call somebody to come uh, help them up. And so uh, what I've learned is if you don't stay active, you don't stay fit, you don't take care of yourself now, it will come back to bite you, uh, especially when you start turning kind of around that 80 year range. Um, I've run into a lot of people that are 85, 90, even 95 that are fine, that are getting around, but uh, you can kind of tell those people are, are slim. You can tell that they've taken care of themselves. They've probably exercised most of their life, uh, probably have not smoked. I mean, I know there's heredity. I know there's a lot of factors into it, but I suggest that uh, you do everything you can to uh, stay active, exercise, stay as, as slim as you can, um, and uh, just beware when you hit that 80 mark. If you're not gonna, if you're not in shape at all, um, things could fall apart really quickly. And so now in 2021, not only are we dealing with the physical restraints that came about in 2020, but now dementia is setting in on both of them. And so. Uh, something that they didn't talk about in high school or college was uh, what you're going to do with your parents, how you're going to take care of them. Uh, so this is something, uh, especially if you're young or if you're a parent and you've got young kids or kids in, in college, um, something that you need to think about, start talking to each other about, find out what the plan is. Is there going to be a nursing home? Is there going to be uh, stay at home? Do we have the finances to keep, keep people at home? So anyway, uh, important conversation. Uh, but again, if you don't stay active when you're young, uh, it is going to catch up with you when you're old. Number five, Jeeps are fun to drive. And so uh, some of you may know I was in an accident a couple months ago with the Buzzmobile, which was a Chevy Equinox, which I had traded for some advertising. And that's why I was driving it. Uh, it was totaled in the accident, so I had to get a new vehicle. I decided to get a Jeep. I had driven Jeeps back in the 80s. I had an 81 CJ7 and an 84 CJ7, and I really, really loved them, and then uh, kind of moved away from them for some sports cars, and then got married and needed some SUVs and, and things like that. And so over the years, I uh, have always kind of had that yearning for a Jeep. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much an outdoorsy guy, sunshine, fun, um, not so much comfort. Not that the new Jeeps are pretty comfortable, not, uh, I mean, way more comfortable than what the 81 and 84 were, but they're bumpy, um, they can be airy, but uh, that, doesn't, I, that doesn't bother me at all. So I'm really enjoying driving my Jeep. I'm learning that there's a whole Jeep culture, a whole Jeep community. I think I've got a whole episode that I'll be doing just on that because you may hear a lot uh, the phrase, it's a Jeep thing. Well, it really is a Jeep thing. There are a lot of things that uh, Jeep owners uh, do with each other and for each other that's really cool. And so um, it's kinda, they've kind of created their own community and uh, it helps with the branding. It helps with uh, you know all of that stuff. And so anyway, uh, literally enough stuff just to do a whole episode on the Jeep culture, which I will do, so that will be fun. But anyway, anyway uh, 2013 Wrangler Sahara is what I'm driving now. Um, I've got the decals on it. I went ahead and put a racing stripe on the hood with the number 22. Uh, I've got Buzzmobile on the side of the hood, and then I, I put my logo, that Buzz guy, on the side windows and so drive around town in that. So anyway, um, fun, uh, kind of fun company vehicle, lets everybody know who I am and what I'm doing. But uh, Jeeps are fun to drive if you're looking uh, for your next vehicle. Number six, having kids move away from home leaves a weird hole in your heart. And so, man, it, it 2020 was really a weird year because uh, I'm kind of in the generation now. I'm 57, but I had kids late. Um, so I'm in that generation right now where my parents are still, some of our parents are still alive and they're getting old and, and we're having to take care of them literally like they are 
our children, but then our children are, we're still having to take care of them, but they are, se my, I've got a senior in high school and a sophomore, or a, yeah, sophomore in, uh, freshman in college. So they're both able to do things on their own, but you still have to, you know, keep up with what's going on there. So I'm in that weird sandwich generation where taking care of kids, taking care of parents at the same time, um, and it's just, there's different uh, things going on. So it's kind of a weird, weird deal. So anyway, but uh, my um, oldest daughter did move away, is going to uh, the University of Oklahoma in Norman. She got on the POM team. And so she's been there. And so the first week that she left, it was a little weird. So if you are a, a young parent and you have kids, man, embrace it and uh, do as much as you can. But uh, there is going to be kind of a weird kind of a weird lost feeling that first weekend that they're gone and they don't come back. And uh, so anyway, just want to let you guys know that was something that I learned in 2020 when she went off to college. Number seven, you can never get enough sunshine ever. And that just comes with uh, me being kind of outdoorsy. And, uh, you know, I like to walk in the morning for an hour and a half. I really enjoy it in the summer when the sun's already out when I start. I love to go out in the afternoon, even on a cold day, as long as the sun's out, I don't mind it. Um, love the sunshine, that's why I love my Jeep. I'm gonna be pulling the top off for uh, this spring and summer and I will drive, probably never put it back on until uh, fall or winter. Uh, one of the things about COVID-19 that they're finding out is uh, a lot of the people that get sicker than other people, uh, especially older people, is their lack of vitamin D. And one of the reasons of that is older people don't get out as much. They don't get out and walk and, and cruise around. So they're stuck in dark, dreary buildings and rooms, and there's just not enough sunlight coming in. And uh, so anyway, um, one way to help fight off uh, the uh, COVID-19 is to get plenty of vitamin D. The best way uh, for your body is sunshine and it's free, but if you can't get enough sunshine, you might take some vitamin, vitamin D supplements. But um, boy, if you guys know me, I just, I love warm weather. I love the beach, anything with tons of sunshine. And uh, because of COVID-19, we didn't get to go on our annual uh, trip out of town to the beach. And so um, that is one thing that uh, I have been missing is uh, getting out into the sunshine. So that was number seven. Uh, you never can get enough sunshine. Number eight, uh, adventure is my trigger word. Uh, I think I talked about this on the prior episode. Uh, I've got a cousin that is a business coach and she's been doing it for several years now and had learned some new stuff and she put out on Facebook that she wanted to test out some of the new stuff that she had learned and was looking for volunteers and I've always wondered if a business coach or personal coach would help me so I thought well I'll volunteer and if uh, she picks me then maybe I'll kind of see how this coaching thing goes so uh, she called me we had an hour session uh, was really beneficial I thought it was really cool I highly recommend using business coaches or personal coaches if you can um, she asked me a lot of questions the answers that I gave her narrowed things down kind of opened my mind and my eyes to to things that I was doing and directions that might help me get to where I wanted to go better but uh, every time we'd go back and forth uh, there was a couple words that kept coming forward and she would notice them and then she would say things and then I would notice that she was saying things using the same words. And so two words that came out of uh, kind of what I'm leaning towards as far as maybe my lifestyle and my business is community and adventure. And so basically, as far as my dream job, which is kind of what I'm doing, is building communities. And so I built the Enid Buzz community. Before that, I'd kind of built up a cartooning community. Uh, another, I'm trying to build build up this uh, Enid or this Curtis Tucker that Buzz Guy community where we can all help each other. Uh, I'm in the same boat as you guys, and so I want us to be a community. Not so much that I'm the leader, but I'm just one of the people in it. You know, we can all help each other with podcasting and blogging and marketing and branding and and all that stuff. So, so community was a, a big word, but then adventure is the word that really gets me going. And so uh, what I learned in 2020 is adventure is my trigger word. 
Uh, when I hear it in a movie, I remember the line. When I see it in a quote on the computer, I remember it. Um, I like to use it in a lot of stuff that I talk about because I like to go on adventures. It, adventure is just a great word that um, just motivates me and you know I want to do things for you guys and I want to do it in the most adventurous way and present uh, samples or examples to you guys while I'm on an adventure and so that's why I'm kind of turning this podcast and video channel into more of a journal where hopefully you guys can follow along with what I'm doing and not so much me just sit here and trying to teach you guys stuff and so adventure is my trigger word and we'll go into I have a feeling I'll end up with a uh, an episode where I just talk about adventure and kind of describe all of that so Number nine, I missed corduroy and terry cloth. And so right now I've got a pair of uh, brown corduroy uh, jeans on. So where that came from is uh, me and my buddy, we do another podcast called the 70s Buzz Podcast. And we've been doing that for about three years. Every episode is about um, why the 70s was the greatest decade known to man. We come up with uh, different subjects, different things. And then for an hour, we just sit there and talk about the 70s. And in 2020, we decided to start doing the second Tuesday. We do it. We we record those every Tuesday night and release them. And so, uh, we decided on the second Tuesday of every month we would do a live forum. Meaning, while we're recording that week's episode, which there's really no subject. It's it's kind of an open subject. We do a Facebook live, and then our followers, people that really like us. Um, we'll get on and, and we'll talk back and forth and they'll ask us questions and, and we'll bring up topics. And so um, when we do that, we, we've turned our studio into kind of a really cool 70s looking studio. We've got beads and a lava lamp. And uh, so what we're trying to do too is dress in our best looking 70s gear or outfit. So I've been buying a lot of uh, 70s looking clothing, looking for them at thrift shops, digging them up, but um, been buying a lot of corduroy. So I think I've got two corduroy shorts and now I'm up to four pair of corduroy pants or jeans and uh, I'm just really enjoying the heck out of them. Uh, if there's one thing that you haven't learned about me, which uh, you'd pick up on really quickly if you went to curtistucker.com or thatbuzzguy.com, um, is I love the 70s. I love to talk about the 70s. Um, I'm writing the book about the 70s. If you didn't know, uh, there will be a book out. Uh, hopefully by the end of the year, that is one of the goals and, and that'll be one, my journey following me along on writing the book. But, um, and then uh, ran across a, there's a really cool kind of a surfing clothing line, business online, and they had a terry cloth shirt. And so anyway, getting, getting kind of into corduroy and terry cloth and a lot of the things from the 70s and really enjoying that. So um, 2020 was kind of a great rebirth for me of the 1970s. And recently, even though this is 2021, um, with my mom, uh, her health failing, we're starting to go through pictures and pictures albums. And um, literally this week, I found a photo album of photos that I didn't even know existed. And uh, I'll be posting those. And if some of you have been following along with me, uh, go back and listen to my episode on me and my Farrah Fawcett poster, which the photo of me holding my Farrah Fawcett poster in 1976 is pretty famous. I found another photo from January 1977, which I didn't even know existed, of me holding that same Farrah Fawcett poster in a different pose. And uh, so I'm getting ready to release that. I mean, who would have thought? And then I, th I may have tracked down a, uh, I don't know if it's a photo of me at Halloween or maybe getting ready for uh, some you know specific day at school, but... Um, just a lot of, oh, and um, if you've listened to my prior episodes on the podcast, you know that I was a young entrepreneur where not only did I sell, you know, buy and resell Jolly Ranchers to make a profit in junior high school, but me and my buddy had started a magic show. I found, we found, I found three really cool pictures of us, and I've talked about how we used to have magic shows in my garage. I have three photos of us performing the magic show in my garage, which I didn't even know those photos existed, and I just found them. So there will be an episode on uh, he and I 
uh, doing our magic shows and earning money as little kids. And, and not only did we do that, but part of the magic show, after the magic show, he would play guitar and sing, and I would get behind the magic box and, and do puppets. And so we also had a puppet show. And then we even got, I even went uh, as deep as to start hand sewing my own puppets. And so um, anyway, really cool. Uh, Gosh, fun stuff. So um, anyway, that was uh, kind of corduroy, terry cloth, uh, bringing back the 70s. Number 10, what we learned in 2020, that job security is a myth. And so that's one of the reasons I hope you guys follow me and start some side gig. Everybody needs a side gig. I have had a side gig or something going ever since high school. Uh, 2020 showed us that no matter how secure you think your job, your business, your boss, your employer can be shut down due to a pandemic that nobody even sees coming. Um, you can have a job, you can be doing something that can be, I mean, it can all go away. Uh, fortunately for me, my business was not affected that much. Uh, nothing really changed for me, but uh, a lot of people did. I know my wife was a, is a dental hygienist and I believe she was off for two, three, two or three months. Um, you know, while we kind of sifted through to see where things were going. So um, if you're out there and you do have, you know, if you do have a good paying job, you know, keep that job and work it, but start building these side gigs, which are blogs and making things and, and podcasts and writing books and, and becoming a teacher or making classes um, or courses or, or things like that. Because then if something does happen to your secure job and you're without income, you're not like so many millions of Americans are right now that can't pay their bills, that are suffering and uh, losing their homes or, or you know losing their apartments. Maybe you can scrape enough cash together by this side gig that you're doing um, you know, to make some money. So anyway, uh, 2020 taught us that there is really no job security. So you guys continue on with those side gigs. Number 11, always have something to look forward to always. And I think, um, basically I learned that in 2020 by, uh, you know, just missing out on vacations. Uh, we have a yearly vacation down to a lake and a beach and uh, getting to go out boating with my best friend from high school. And we didn't get to do that because of COVID. And so I didn't have that to look forward to. We, we weren't making really any trips. Um, and so I think that's where some people were getting um, depressed and depression sets in. And if you don't have anything to look forward to, and I know 2020 caused a lot of us, you know, there was no movies to go to and no concerts to go to. And so in 2021, even though we're still finding our way through this and everything's not open, open wide, especially in some states, it's still as closed down as it was. Um, look for some silver lining, look for that blue spot in the sky and, and you guys plan something and you know maybe it's six months, nine months, a year down the line, but that's going to give you something when you wake up every morning, you're going to be able to think, oh, I've got that coming up and that's going to help hopefully motivate you. And, and it, maybe it's not doing something as far as like a vacation or, or going to a concert, but maybe it's writing a book, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you know, hey, I've got uh, three months left and I'm going to have my book done or I'm going to be doing my blog and I'm going to have my 100th uh, blog post written in December, you know, but find something, maybe a goal and uh, and look forward to that every day. So I think that's going to help. But we did find out that, uh, or I did find out that if you don't have something to look forward to, uh, you can get a little depressed. Number 12, everything can change in an instant. And I mean everything. And again, that just goes back to all these other things that I'm saying. Uh, no matter how healthy you are, no matter how secure you think your job is, no matter what you think is going on. Um, you may have had, you may have a business or a restaurant that's been around for five decades. Uh, with this pandemic, uh, we've showed that uh, everything can change in an instant overnight. Look, our, con our entire country, we were cruising along with the best economy, the lowest unemployment almost ever. Everything was great. Everything was cruising along and almost overnight, we shut everything down and it all stopped. Um, and so just be aware that whatever you're doing, everything is not guaranteed. 
reason I tell you that again too is start now because uh, if you're waiting for two months to start your blog or your podcast or your business or talking to somebody you haven't talked to in a while, uh, you may not get that chance in two months. Uh, do it now. There's no guarantee what, uh, what's going to come along. So number 13, working from home was cool before the pandemic. And of course, I know that I, I kind of went to work for myself and working at home in 2003. And since then, I've always worked in one way or another from home. And uh, I always thought there were a lot of jobs out there where it was just a waste of people's time to have them go into an office, get their work done in, let's say, you know, six hours, seven hours, and then have that one or two hours at the end of the day where they're done, but they've got to sit there to justify getting that paycheck and just such a waste of resources and people's time. Um, you know, if you are a business owner and you've got employees, you know, assign them duties. If they get the work done, let them go or let them work from home. What we're finding out that it, that will be one of the new norms uh, um, after the pandemic. Uh, I think a lot of everything else is going to go back to regular normal. Uh, I, I know it is, but I think the way that some businesses and some people work, I think that is going to change and that, and that could be for the better. And uh, if more people can stay home or have the freedom to go to their kids, plays at school but still get their work done man that's a hundred percent so um, what 2020 did teach us was a lot more people are able to work from home and the world will still run and people still get the work done and they're just not sitting there trying to stay awake in an office just because you want them there eight hours a day so let's get rid of that if you got employees if they get their work done let them go uh, number 14, if you can't pivot, you won't survive. And, and uh, 2020 taught us that. I know a lot of restaurants that were unable to, they were unable to look, you know, at things differently and uh, they shut down. They just closed down almost immediately while other restaurants learned how to work the drive through how to get people to come in and do the walk up and then how to order food and take it home and warm it up and uh, some restaurants that did really well actually some restaurants did better during the pandemic than before the pandemic and i know they were making up big family batches of food and uh, freezing them and then people would come in pick them up take them home and cook them and so they were making way more money off of that than if people had just come in to eat at their restaurant. So you've got to be able to pivot. Don't be so hard and steadfast in whatever you're doing that you can't find different ways and look at things differently. Um, if you guys know my story, I was doing you know the cartooning and the uh, AdSense and things and that all went away and so I had to pivot which was to the digital community, Enid Buzz. And uh, so every time something hit me, I would figure out where to pivot and uh, do something new. So 2020 taught us you've got to be able to pivot if you want to survive. Uh, probably I may even end up, a lot of these, uh, it's going to be funny, a lot of these may end up being episodes uh, in themselves, which uh, pivoting is probably going to be. Number 15, people can be so committed to one ideology that they lose sight of common sense. Uh, basically, in one word, politics. Uh, some people out there are so hard to the right or so hard to the left that uh, they cannot compromise and they don't believe the truth that's smacking them right in the face. They would rather listen to the fake news and the fake memes that they see on Facebook and, and the manipulation and uh, just because they're, you know, one political side or the other, they're not going to believe anything else. And uh, this whole, you know, this spewed over into 2021 with the election results. And uh, boy, it's just, it's, it's scary that so many millions of people can be manipulated and not think for themselves. Uh, gosh, it's scary. So please think for yourself. Um, don't be so tied down into being Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, that you can't compromise and put yourself in the other person's shoes. Uh, we need more of that of people in the middle if we're ever going to get out of this mess. Uh, number 16, if your parents live long enough, you need to be prepared to take care of them. Uh, we touched on this earlier about uh, taking care of yourself, but yeah, so I'm in that generation right now where a lot of my friend's parents are passing away 
and then the rest of us are having to take care of our parents and and when we say take care of you know we're talking people are having to change diapers and pick people up out of bed and feed them and do all of their bills and do their taxes for them and um, you know it's the stuff that you may not think about so if your parents are getting older um, man think of, talk about it now talk to them now what I would suggest uh, doing a lot of work for nursing and I hate I don't want to use the word nursing home uh, senior living we need to get past the stigma of the nursing homes but if you if you do have parents that are, are going to be getting older um, try to get them into a senior living earlier, like in their 70s, mid 70s, late 70s. Don't wait. Uh, going into a senior living turns into being like a nursing home if they go in when they already can't do anything for themselves. Uh, then it's depressing, but if they'll go in at a younger age, if you guys set this up and decide, okay, we know that we're not going to be able to take care of you when you're 80, 85, so let's plan now they can get into these communities, find friends, find people to help them. They, they always have somebody to do something with. They're already part of the system. Um, it's actually fun. Uh, I see, I, I go to these uh, senior living centers to do advertising for them, and they're doing all their stuff going on almost every night. They have a cafeteria where they all eat together. Uh, you know, I know my mom didn't do that. My mom's sitting at home by herself in a chair, the same chair every day, watching the same channel on the TV every day. You know, we, you know, family members, we, we pop by every day and at least talk to her for a couple of hours, but um, it's still not the same as, as having a, a full-blown community around you. So anyway, if your parents or you are starting to get older, please start thinking ahead of time before you can't walk or, or you have dementia. Think, what am I gonna do? What am I do with my parents? Talk about it, make a plan. That's something that, that something's got to change in the United States is we've got to figure out a system, how we know what we're going to do with ourselves or our parents as we get older. Number 17, the people in charge aren't always the smartest people in the room. Uh, I don't remember exactly what set that one off, but uh, basically uh, what I've learned, especially with politics, is... Um, you know, looking at all the candidates, you look at the candidates and you shake your head and you wonder, is this really the best and the brightest in the United States of America? And then it whittles down to the one, the two candidates on each side that actually make it to the election. And then again, what I've learned is with the past several elections, we don't actually elect anybody. We don't elect people. So, so the reason that Joe Biden won wasn't because more people in the history of the world wanted to vote for Joe Biden. It was more people in the history of the world wanted to vote against Donald Trump. And so um, what we're learning is some of those people that are in charge aren't the most capable people. And uh, it's a little scary that they get into the positions they do and I know maybe a lot of it comes down to maybe money, but um, yeah, we got to get some people, you know, in charge of government, in charge of medical, in charge of science, in charge of so many things uh, that are smarter than some of the people that are there now. Um, and I don't know how we're going to get it done, but uh, that's one thing that I learned in 2020. Number 18, you can never have enough toilet paper. That one's kind of a, a joke, but um, yeah, kind of weird. Uh, you know, look at things, look at the things that you have, the things that you don't have. Uh, I would say after the pandemic, go ahead and try to be prepared, um, have money, cash on hand, don't have everything in the bank, you know, have extra batteries, extra water, extra food, extra toilet paper. Uh, it's kind of funny, we just recently did an episode of the 70s buzz about The Tonight Show, and back in the 70s, Johnny Carson made a joke one night on his on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson that there was a toilet paper shortage and the next day he caused a toilet paper shortage because the people heard that there was a shortage so they all ran to the grocery stores and bought everything which is exactly what happened kind of with the pandemic um, you know there really was no shortage it's when you hear there's a shortage you know, you actually cause the shortage. So um, be aware of that. 
uh, like I say, I think I think the lesson there is just always try to have everything that you need on hand. Don't wait, don't wait until there's an emergency to uh, to get what you need. You know, um, have money in the bank, a savings. Have, like I said, cash on hand. You know, if if you know this pandem- pandemic showed us that anything can happen. So let's say, what if in two years uh, somebody takes down the whole electricity system or the banking system or the internet system and you can't get money out of an ATM. If you don't have any money in your pocket, um, you're going to be in a sore spot. So anyway, um, you never can have enough toilet paper, meaning uh, be prepared. Just be prepared. So number 19, never lose contact with your 12 and 13 year old best friends. what I'm learning there is we're, we've re- reconnected all, you know, that's why I love the 70s. It's why I love where I grew up. Um, we had a group of, of about four or five, six of us that literally a couple summers we did everything together. It was so fun. It was free. You know, we had a lot of freedom, but um, we all did lose contact over the years. But because of Facebook and social media, we have been brought back together. Now we get together. We we uh, have lunches and dinners and, and get together and go on vacations. And uh, even after all these years, those are probably still my closest friends. And, and that's why I'm writing the book. The book is based on those guys that I grew up with. And so just like in the movie Stand By Me at the end, you know, him talking about 13-year-olds, um, do you ever have friends um, like the ones you had when you were 13? Probably not. Uh, you guys, you know, at that age, you're you're it's coming. You're coming of age. You're sharing things. You're discovering things all at the same time. You're telling secrets to each other that you'd probably ne- never tell to anybody else. You're. It's just kind of that eye-opening experience, and you're you only you only get to do that with a a handful of guys or people that are around you. And so uh, stay in contact with those people, uh, lesson 20 in 2020. And then last one, number 20, some squirrels are smarter than others. And if you followed along and uh, you're aware of uh, the squirrel that I kind of trained to come into my office and there during the summer, he literally came in every day and I fed him by hand and he'd take, sunflower seeds out of my hand. And then I actually had started training a second one. Um, she was a little more skittish, but we were just getting on the ball when when it started to get a little cooler and all that fell apart. But it was interesting that over time, before that and after that, you know, I would try to um, even just get food to the other squirrels and they just were completely unaware that I was tossing them seeds. Whereas the the one squirrel that I was able to train to come in, I don't know if I trained him, he may have trained me, he probably trained me, but um, to feed him. But that shows that he was way smarter than the others. And so um, some squirrels are smarter than the others. Same way with people, uh, the lesson there is Um, you know, kind of be aware of who you hang around with because uh, some of your friends, some of your acquaintances are smarter than others. Uh, There's that one phrase about you're the sum total of the closest five people you spend most of your time with or whatever, but uh, in a way it probably is true. So um, if you do have a small group of people, try to make sure that uh, three out of the five are smarter than you are and uh, learn from them you know, use them as mentors, spend a lot of time with them. Um, But again, kind of goes back to my uh, phrase that some squirrels are smarter than others. So anyway, there's my list of 20 things I learned in 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, If you didn't, let me know. I mean, uh, tell me if you hate these type of episodes. But again, this podcast and uh, YouTube channel are going to be evolving a little bit. Uh, that's kind of why I stopped at the end of 2020 because I, I knew the direction that I was headed was not the way I wanted to go. I don't want this podcast to be just like every other marketing and branding and entrepreneur podcast because they're all the same. They all interview the same guest. They all talk about being afraid. They all talk about uh, life, work balance. They all talk about the same things. And so I'm going to try to be a little more, um, I don't know, freewheeling. Uh, just coming up with different things. Hopefully every episode that I put out will teach you, motivate you, 
or uh, give you entertain you. Um, so that that's my goal. Uh, my goal is for us to all build a community together and help each other. I think we all should be working for ourselves. I don't want anybody to have to work a job uh, where they have to go in eight hours and sit there and try to stay awake the last two hours of the day because there's nothing to do. Uh, and so let's let's change the way that we do things. Let's help each other. If there's something I can help you guys with, uh, hit me up at buzz at buzzheadmedia.com or curtis at cartoons.com. Please keep checking in. Your feedback is, is what keeps me going. And I'm seeing my numbers tick up a little bit. But, but look at my numbers real quick. And you'll notice I think I'm at about 428 uh, subscribers on YouTube. In the, in the scheme of things, that's nothing. You know, I, I don't have to have a million or 500,000 people following me. When you think about it, over 400 people subscribing to my channel is pretty cool. I mean, if I was in a room and there was 400 people, that would be pretty cool to be able to talk to 400 people. So, so don't get caught up in these numbers. Um, if you look at my, uh, you know, I look at my download numbers on the podcast and, you know, they're, you know, I think some of them are getting up into the 50 download range. Uh, but it's not 10,000 downloads. And so um, we all got to start somewhere. Everybody, everybody, uh, unless they're, they cheat, pretty much everybody starts at zero. And, uh, and a lot of my numbers, uh, especially like on the YouTube channel, you know, I started that when I was doing different kind of things way back in the day. And so, you know, since I started this isn't when I started the YouTube channel. And so um, so don't worry about numbers. Uh, please try to ignore the numbers. What, I, what I've noticed is one of my accounts, especially my Enid Buzz Instagram account, um, I completely ignored it, but I just would post every now and then. Uh, it grew leaps and bounds. I think I'm up to 8,000 and I don't follow anybody except one guy, which is me from that Enid Buzz Instagram account. And uh, it just grows and grows and grows. And I don't really, I try not to pay attention to it. I just, I, what you gotta do is put your head down and create, 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 help people, help people, help people. Don't look at the numbers. Don't look at the numbers. Don't listen to the negative feedback. Don't listen to the ne negative feedback. And next thing you know, a year down the road, 18 months down the road, you're going to lift up your head and you're going to be like, wow, look where I've gotten from where I was 18 months ago. But what I will remind you is if you don't start today, right now, if you don't take the reins and start by tonight, 18 months from now, you're going to look back and say, wow, I wish I had started something. I've got nothing to show. It's 18 months since I listened to that podcast and I haven't done anything. I haven't started anything new. Just think, what if I had started something 18 months ago? Where would I be now? What, what could it have led to? Uh, and, and I think I'll have an, an episode of just, and I, I've probably, I think I've hit on it before, but, um, the things that have happened to me just because I put myself out there. So anyway, I think I've done, I may have done an episode on that, but I'll look at that again. So anyway, go to curtistucker.com. It's also thatbuzzguy.com. Listen to the podcast, wherever you listen to podcast. And I hope everybody is having a great 2021. I hope the sound on this was okay. Again, I'm using a lavalier mic uh, directly into my iPhone is how I'm recording this podcast. I'll be trying different things for different sounds. Uh, so a lot of you um, will know the different sounds. The one thing that uh, don't let sound stop you starting a podcast, but as you get going, you want to make sure that you do improve and make sure you have the best sound quality. But I don't want you to sit there for six months and say, I can't start a podcast because I don't have a microphone. You don't need a microphone. All you need is a phone and the Anchor app. You turn it on, you talk into your phone. Maybe you sit in a closet where there's some good sound and, and you're gonna get a good, good enough quality podcast episode out of it. But again, 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 um, you know, you want to improve, but uh, don't let that stop you from starting. So anyway, everybody have a great day. Uh, really appreciate you guys. And I'm going to pull up my little handy dandy watch here, my Apple watch, turn on. Uh, there I am. So show you guys again real quick. This is the Apple watch. It controls uh, my phone and the camera. And I'm going to zoom. So if you, if you, like I said, if you roll the handle, show you guys my, so there's my background. There's, by rolling the handle, it's zooming in and out. And uh, so, and then it's also got the on and off button. I'm gonna hit the off button and I will see you guys later.